Our gospel this morning begins in the evening of what is called the first day of the week, which we know as Easter Day. The disciples have not moved since last Sunday, except to gather in a house with locked doors because they were afraid. Let's recall what transpired earlier that day Mary Magdalene and the other women entered the tomb because the stone had been rolled away and they were told by a young man sitting there that Jesus had been raised and they were to go tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus was going ahead of them into Galilee where they would see him. And Mark's gospel tells us that the women said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. We don't know what the women did because there are other texts which tell us that they did tell his disciples and that Jesus appeared to Mary and said, don't be afraid, and for her to go tell. And we hear that Peter ran to the tomb and we hear that Jesus appeared to two of them as they were walking along a road. And we sit here 2,000 years later having heard many stories of what happened on that first day of the week. And yet, Mark tells us that the women were afraid and said nothing to anyone. Fear seems to be what the disciples of Jesus were feeling also. If you listen to the gospel being read, you heard me say that the disciples were afraid of the Jews. And in defense of our Jewish brothers and sisters and against the sin of anti-Semitism, fear of the Jewish authorities is probably a much better rendering for what is written. The disciples were Jews themselves, as was Jesus. They were not afraid of their religious identity and ethnicity, but they were afraid of the power their religious leadership had asserted, and they were afraid of the crowd mentality that had taken over the city. They had forgotten what their own scripture had told them over and over, fear not. And they had forgotten who they were as disciples of the teacher from Nazareth, who had just faced the same crowd and the same authorities fearlessly. After all that had transpired, they were gathered together, huddled in darkness and fear, trying to make sense of things, trying to figure out who they were without their teacher. They were alive, but they were dying inside, locked in that house, living in fear, living in the past, not knowing where to go, and not able to see the light. Then they heard, peace be with you. Those four words woke them up. They rejoiced when they heard the voice of their teacher. They were brought into the present. And Jesus said to them, peace be with you. The first thing Jesus does in resurrection with the disciples is pass the peace. You can feel the relief, the jubilation among these disciples. Again, he says, peace be with you, and adds, as the, Father has, as the Father sent me, so I send you. I bet they were so happy to have them in their midst that they didn't wonder what Jesus meant by the words, so I send you. They may not have even heard them. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus sends them from that locked house into the world to bring peace and to forgive sins. They cannot do this on their own as forgiving sins is not easy. 
Yet when filled with the Holy Spirit and living in God's light and love, they can forgive. There was much they needed to forgive in order for them to live the life they were called to live. Forgiveness may not be easy, but it allows us to live in the presence with an open heart, Remembering and retaining our sins and the sins of others keeps us bound, like being in a locked house. We are not free. We are not alive, but are bound to what is holding us in our past. Rob Boyle, a priest and a teacher, says that a friend of his has pointed out that Jesus talked a lot about forgiveness and seemed quite skilled at forgiving but he didn't teach his followers how to forgive. Either he or the writers of the Gospels neglected to teach the nature of resentment and the process for forgiving others. Boyle says when we don't know how to forgive, we have four options. We can stay resentful as a self-protective blanket to prevent further pain. We can numb out our pain and become passionless and disengaged. We can avoid the context, such as the church where the injury occurred. And or we can learn to forgive. Forgiveness takes practice, and it's a skill we can develop. Forgiveness is something that we do in the present to let go of the demand that the past can be different. When Thomas heard that the others had seen the Lord, he seemed a bit resentful. I have to see and touch Jesus for myself or I won't believe, he said to them. Was he resentful that he had not been with them that night? Where was he? Did he carry this resentment around with him during the week? We don't know but we can imagine how we might have experienced missing out on seeing Jesus. A week later, as our gospel tells us, Thomas was with the disciples when Jesus appears again. All it took for Thomas to address Jesus as Lord and God was to see him, to be in his presence. He didn't need to touch his wounds but to hear his voice, to connect heart to heart. Isn't that what Mary Magdalene wanted and the disciples when she told them she had seen him, if she did? And Thomas, when he heard his brother's experience, Thomas was not doubting. He wanted to see Jesus, to experience the resurrected Christ like the others had. Haven't you been there, hearing the experiences of others and wanting those same experiences for yourself, desiring the deeper journey of the spirit that others have shared? Resurrection changes everything. The disciples were sent out into the world, into a world that was risky, and they were called to live not in the past, but in the present, sharing the message of Jesus. As the gospel reads, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Resurrection is a process. It is an invitation to a journey of loving God, ourselves and others. It begins with receiving the peace of God and learning to share that peace. We cannot do that on our own, so we too have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. We learn to walk in love, We learn to see love in the gift of others, and we learn to share love. 
How do we see Jesus? Where do we see Jesus? And when we do, do we feel it in our hearts? Are we open to living in the present, to feeling heart energy flowing between us and others? And this energy is where we see Jesus. It can take many forms, but we know it as we open our hearts to one another. The Friday Book Group has been reading a book called, a book that's very different for our Friday group. I don't think we've ever quite read a book like this. And it's called One Long River of Song by Brian Doyle. And this book is a journey. It's a journey of resurrection in its essays and how we connect with the author, with one another, and God in our midst. And I thought of one of the essays the other day as I went to the post office and there was one clerk at the desk and the line was out the door. And Doyle writes about having a chat with God at the post office where God works. <laughs> he is patient. He never loses his cool. And when asked, he says, I try to put myself in their position and witnessing vented emotion is part of the job. And all storms blow over and it's only frustration. And there are so many much more serious things. And in the end, we are all neighbors. And Doyle also saw God in another essay by chance one morning, just as the kindergarten bus show, slowed down for the stop at Maple Street. God was six girls and one boy with a bright green and purple stegosaurus hat. Of course, God would wear a bril brilliantly covered colored tail, tall dinosaur hat. If you were the imagination that dreamed up everything that ever was in this blistering, perfect, terrible world, wouldn't you wear a hat celebrating some of the wildest, most amazing developments? <laughs> Where do we see God? Do we take the time to notice? May God's peace be with you.